atas galanya Tiada yang sepertimu Yesus sujudku menyembahmu Kau Raja yang teragung Kau yang termulia Nama yang menangkanku Giving all I am to you With all my heart and gratitude Hope of all the earth Giving back what's rightly yours Praise from dawn to dusk and more Hope of all the earth Great I am
the heaven shout your praise nations bow and tremble at your name with one voice we will shout your faith song of god the truth the life the way
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Every Nation Gateway. This week, as part of our Awesome God series, we'll be having Andra Lau, who will be preaching to us on the topic Jehovah Jireh, which is one of God's many names. And if you prefer to watch our sermon series in Mandarin, you can tune in tonight at 9.30 p.m. to watch one of our past week's sermon series in Mandarin, in our Mandarin translation sermon series. Remember to share it on your timeline so that you can bless your Mandarin-speaking friends around you. And last but not least, we have finally moved to L1 at KL Gateway Mall. Right, we are now in a mall, we are no longer at 27th floor. The lights are in, the sound systems are in, renovation is done beautifully. And in fact, right now, I'm standing right here at L1 uh, hosting this service. Right, so we can't wait for all of us to come back here as a family to worship God together. So this is a time where we are going to move into a time of worship, but before we go into that, let us pray and commit this time to the Lord. Father Lord Jesus, today as we come together, I pray that we will be able to encounter your presence. Lord, come into each one of our houses, each one uh, of our hearts, wherever we are right now. Lord, speak to us in our worship and speak to us through your word. Lord, we pray and commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And now, we'll move on to the time of worship. Come, let's praise Jesus. Let's give all the praise and glory to our God. Every tribe. Every tribe will see your glory. 
praise you have for him. He's worthy of our praise. Be exalted now in the heavens as the glory fills his yes, place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of our Father. Be exalted. Be exalted now in the yes, heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone. Church, welcome back and I'm so honoured to be able to preach to you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Andrea. I'm one of the leaders in this church and I'm so honoured to bring you and unpack for you a portion of what God's flavour is in life, right? So we're on this topic on Jehovah Jireh. We are on this season on learning on what awesome this awesome God series, right? And let me just share with you a perspective of what are we doing with this Awesome God series, okay? To me, in the simplest form, it's like we're giving you a tasting platter of what God is and who God is. When I say tasting platter, it's exactly like saying, imagine you have tried chili, you would know how chili tastes like. And every time when somebody comes to you and says like, wow, it tastes like chili, you would know that it's chili. So in the same way, we're going to expose and see how God is to every one of us through the characters in the Bible. And today, we're going to go through and learn these this three things. We're going to identify the God's names in our lives. Okay, We're going to personalize the encounters of people in the Bible to show you those flavors. right? And then lastly, we want to elevate our own relationships with God. So that is the foundation of what this Awesome God series is. So I'm going to share with you on this portion where we're going to talk about Jehovah Jireh. It literally means my provider. 
this is a topic whereby we're going to explore uh, the life of Abraham, all right? So on screen, you see that I've actually just un unpacked the simple things I want you to be aware of as I'm preaching to you today. So the first thing is I want you to catch hold of the posture of responding to God. How did Abraham respond to God in this particular story today? The next thing is also notice his faith and his confidence and how he's actually obeying God. And the last part is look at how God has orchestrated everything to the fulfillment of God's purpose, right? So that's the three things I want you to highlight, right? It would help if you just probably take a picture of the slides right now and just keep it in mind. These are the three things I want you to be reminded of, right? And I'll come back to them at the end, okay? So on this story of Abraham, we're going to go through Genesis 22, almost a whole portion of it. But I know it's going to be really long. So I hope you bear with me, but also understand and enjoy the journey that I'm going to bring you through in understanding who God is, a God that provides through the lens of Abraham in his season of sacrificing his son Isaac. Okay, but before I go on, right, I just want to tell you, I wrestled so much when I was reading this, this entire portion of the Bible. I was question, having so many questions like, why is there even a sacrificial moment? Why is there even this, this order of this need? But of course, we all know Isaac wasn't sacrificed in the end. But we want to unpack it level by level, piece by piece, line by line, why and how God orchestrated everything. Okay, so now we look into Genesis 22 verse 1 first. Okay, we're going to go through line by line. So bear with me today, right? The first one it says, uh, in Genesis 22 1, it says, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Okay, let's just give it a pause there, right? In the verse, it clearly says, after these things, all right? So we'll focus on after these things. What things are we referring to, okay? So i give you a quick background context, right, of what are we talking about, okay? We're going to look in the book of Genesis, okay? There are obviously a huge bunch of characters that have shown up in the book of Genesis. But right now, I'm just going to emphasize on these few areas, all right? Genesis 1 to 2, it obviously illustrates how God uh, made God's plans in creating the world and how what's the intentions for us and he's created uh, Adam and Eve to fill the earth and everything else. Then we go into Genesis 3 to 11. It really shows the stories of how men and how complex human beings are with our emotions, with our experiences, with our free will, with our choices, with our downfalls. There is some things. But all with those downfalls, we see God bringing through a life or a perspective for us to learn that He is with us. That is between Genesis 1 to 11. Then we find that Genesis 12 to 21, it introduces the life of Abraham on how he has been going through life and how he experiences different things. And that's just unpacking, right? So I just want to bring that to your attention, right? When we start off with Genesis 22, it doesn't mean that it just starts off one shot where Abraham is just surprised by God out of nowhere, right? But God has actually been preparing his heart for this. So when we talk about Genesis 12 to 21, it's really about the entire life of how Abraham was experiencing God piece by piece, part by part. In that journey, he did fall, he did make mistakes, he did have his doubts. But at the end of the day, our God is still God and he's constant, right? So that's the perspective you need to remember, okay? So when we come back to Genesis 22 verse 1, it says, after these things, God tested Abraham. When we, te when we say God tested Abraham, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that God always puts us through a test, right? Okay. But the one thing is also to know, whenever God puts any one of us through a test, He always, always prepares us for it. Like how He had prepared Abraham through His relationship, His friendship with God, that he has come to a point where God wants to know what is his heart for him. So that's the perspective that you're taking, okay? So now we go to verse 2. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you, right? Also, just to let you know, this is a very interesting text that we're going to explore today. In Genesis 22, it talks about all the sacrificial uh, decisions that what God has asked Abraham to do for his son, Isaac, right? But there's many scholars believe that this was actually a prophetic 
um, messaging or prophetic moment to actually represent who Jesus will be for us at the end of the day. Throughout the passage, you will find that there are identical areas where we can see the similarities of how Isaac was treated and how Jesus was treated. But of course, the ending is very far different. But let's go and see where does God want us, look, want us to look at it, right? So it says, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, right? As much as God loves us, God definitely loves Jesus. So that's the relationship there, right? And then go to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering. Okay. First of all, I want to give you some context, right? The idea of having burnt offering or burning um, children back in the day, it was something normal, I would say. Uh, not, it's not something common but it would be something normal, right? That there are gods back then where people idolize and they would offer up children as a form of offering through a burnt offering, right? But the point is not to say that it's okay to burn children, right? Through this entire story, I want to show you that certain things that might look to us a bit crazy right now in our daily life, it's because it's in a contextual form, right? It's back then. Okay, but not forgetting, Abraham is someone who definitely loves God, right? And, and obeys his commandments. We know he's a good man. He's a man who loves his wife, a man who loves his children, right? So we want to just first off take that, okay? Abraham still loves Isaac, right? It's, it even says here, someone that he loves. Okay, then the next part, we look into it, which is understanding on the next portion, okay? Whereby, after he received this particular um, a command to go and sacrifice his child, the third verse immediately goes into, go. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he, and he cut the wood of the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Right? Okay, let's just go through this motion, right? If, let's just say, not in the context of your child that I'm asking you to sacrifice, right? I'm just probably asking you to sacrifice your pet, right? Uh, I think those of us who have pets will understand that it's not so easy to just disassociate ourselves to one, one loving being, right? I have a pet myself, and you, if, let's say, God were to ask me, it's like, and you're going to sacrifice your dog right now, right? I would like, God, can we talk about this? This is quite serious. It's a life right there. I would go into a negotiation mode with God, right? And knowing that, you see, a lot of us would have definitely gone through that journey, okay? How often of us have we actually just not mattered about our physical, our circumstances, but always trusted God in our circumstances? So you can imagine, when I say we want to highlight the posture of Abraham, this one part we want to, we want to highlight, right? Without delay, without any negotiations, without anything, Abraham processed it and believed and trust in God. So immediately he rose in the morning and went ahead and, and um, saddled his donkey, got his men and brought Isaac, his son, there. But not only that, right? Not only that he just obliged to it, he even did the preparation he needed to get it done right. Okay? I think there are, that's also a, a place whereby it says, and he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose to and went to the place. I think the cutting of the wood kind of action Imagine if you're just about to do the same thing, right? Okay. I would find every excuse to not even bring the wood and say, like, oh, I forgot to bring the wood. Oh, sorry, gee, God, I, I need to delay this, right? Okay, but but no, you see, that's the posture of how Abraham's heart is, right? He knows that if he has to do it, he must do it wholeheartedly, willingly, and full in his efforts as well. So that also shows that he even cut the wood and that's something which I really, um, I'm so amazed by, right? Then we go forward with the next portion, which is, so meaning when, at right now, okay, so we're at uh, Genesis 22, verse 3, okay? He cut the wood from the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him, right? And then in verse 4, it immediately jumps to, on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from afar, okay? So there's that gap between uh, he received the message and then he got the message to go, right? And then he's in this midst, in this journey of going there. I just want to really imagine this, right? You're taking a journey to go and sacrifice a loved one. And 
things might be crazy and there's every opportunity to turn back within that few days. But, but Abraham didn't. And I'm quite sure, as you see, if God set this as a test for Abraham, God was definitely there with him during this period of time. That's one thing which I want to highlight as well. Whenever we realize we're in a test by God, God will always be there for you. That's one very important factor that you just always remember. No test God sends you into without Him backing your back and being there for you. So that's one thing you have to always remember, right? In the lens of your test, God never leaves you alone, right? And then once in, and then God had told him the place, right? And that was ob- obviously a conversation that God probably dropped into Abraham as well. So there was proof, like some sort, like seeing as a communication between the both of them, right? So we reach to verse 4 where it says, On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from afar. Okay. So here is also another signifying moment, right? Where we talk about on the third day, they arrive at this area at Moriah. But the question is, this resonates a lot to how Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, right? So if we backtrack and we look at it, right? Okay, so what Abraham got the message was the, that night itself, that, or that, that time when uh, God reached out to Abraham and said like, hey, go and sacrifice your son at uh, the land of Moriah, right? At that moment, Abraham had already accepted the fact that he has lost his son. At that moment, he knew he had to part from his son, and in his heart, Isaac had probably just died in his heart. So now, the significance of the third day was, if let's say in the same way Jesus died on the first day, and then the, on the third day he rose, this context also sets on the third day, right? At, on the day, if let's say we look, we look at how Jesus died uh, and rose again, on the third day, no one knew he was going to rise again, but only God knew. So in the same way, God knew. And God knew this was just a test for Abraham. Okay, so now we move forward to see that once on the third day, they arrived at this place. And in Genesis uh, 22 verse 5 says, Then Abraham said to his young men, all right, so at this portion, young men here is not his children. It's probably one of his helpers and sort of uh, like assistants kind of thing, right? And then he said to them, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. All right. And in verse 6, it says, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Right? And then he took in his hands the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. Okay. So just some understanding for the context of the word. Okay. So we look at five, right? Okay. We arrive at the place. Okay. We're sort of quite near there. Okay. Then he goes to the man and says, like, Hey, um, I will go over there and worship and come again to you, right? Both him and the boy will come back again to you, he told the young man, okay? That itself is that faith and confidence that Abraham has, that he knows. He knows that God is going to provide. And moreover, he even used the word worship, right? If God had asked you to sacrifice something and on your way of doing that, I would just really question, in my midst of sacrificial, am I willing to even worship God? I can really imagine that. So a lot of times, if let's say for my case, right, I used to have this experience of running my own business. And at one point, I knew God was telling me, you know, it's time to let it go, right? It wasn't even a sacrifice, right? It was just asking me to let it go, right? I knew at one portion of the time when I received that message to let it go, it felt so horrible, it felt so painful. Worshipping was something so hard to do in that midst. But Abraham did it without a reluctance and he knew and he even told other people about it, what he is going to do. I think that posture of Abraham of knowing that God is in control is so powerful and so admirable. So many of us can learn how much we can commit to him in our circumstances, right? So now we go through the verses again and then it says, uh, it says and stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. It's a confidence that he will come back with the boy, with them, right? Then in verse 6, it says, Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Okay. In the same manner, imagine the wood, the burnt offering, right? It's actually Jesus carrying his own cross to 
the, the place where he had to be crucified, right? That's that moment, that same reaction of that same feeling, right? But Isaac had to take up his own wood to bring up to the place of worship. Okay. At the same time, I think I just want to take a pause here, right? Okay, so I, I think I struggle with this question here, right? Okay, Isaac is probably about 15 years old to about 25, 35 kind of thing, right? There are scholars who believe he was between the age range, okay? The next part, I was just thinking like, okay, if he's big enough or he's old enough to carry sufficient wood, okay, it means he has to be pretty strong as well, right? So just imagine this, right? Okay, as we journey through this story, right? Just think about the age difference between Abraham and Isaac, okay? Abraham and Isaac, okay? Just keep in mind. One's a 110, 25-year-old man, and one's are like probably 15 to 25-year-old, 30-year-old man. And both of them are going towards this mountain uh, to sacrifice Isaac. But of course, Isaac didn't know it yet, all right? But let's just go deeper and see what happens next, okay? So we've gone through, okay? So both of them went up, okay? And then as they're going up in uh, verse 7, it says, And Isaac said to his father Abraham, Okay, my father, okay, and he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Okay, this is like the hardest questions that you can ever receive, right? I, can, I don't have children, right? But I can imagine, like, I have friends having tearing stories of like, when your kids ask you a very difficult question, you can't ask, explain them to, to them directly, right? It's always a tricky session. Okay, but Abraham was extremely wise in this moment. And why? It's also because he hung on the same truth, the same confidence, the same faith that he had began this journey with God, right? So in verse 8, it says, Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they were, so with that, Isaac just heard it and said, okay, great. Then probably let's just go. Then so they went on, the both of them together, back up to the mountain, right? Then it's just really focusing on this part, okay? As we unpack and go through this, okay? In Hebrews 11, 17, verse 19, okay? There's a portion of the Bible where it actually talks about Abraham himself, right? Knowing and trusting how much God has actually provided and God is in control and has the power to do the things that um, is in control to actually keep Isaac alive, right? And also or probably even he had to sacrifice Isaac Isaac would be revived, right? Okay, so I bring you to the verse in Hebrews 11, verse 17 to 19. Let me read them to you right now to just show you the context of the situation, okay? Verse 17, is, uh, on 17 it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, who had received the promises, was in the act of offering up his only son, okay? Of whom it was, it was said, Through Isaac shall your offering, offsprings be named, okay? So just remember, uh, God promised Abraham, you will be the father of many, right? And back then, he didn't even have a son. And then they went on trying his own way in getting Ishmael. And then, then officially, God gave Isaac to him. But in the whole entire thing, God promised, Isaac, uh, God promised Abraham that you will have that son that I will give you, right? And the same way as how he has promised that through his son, there will be more offsprings all around. And as much as the, as the sand and the, and the skies and the stars, that was the promise that God gave to Abraham. And Abraham held tight on that promise. So in verse 19, he considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back at the end of the whole entire journey, right? So he's just giving you a background thought, right? We're not currently assuming that um, Abraham is just blindly doing this or like just trying to be a good, obedient person, just doing things, right? But actually, Abraham has been thinking through it, he's logic by it, he actually sunk in and holds on to God's promises in his life. Because the fact that Isaac appeared in his life, he knew God was going to fulfill his promises and his covenant with Abraham, right? So that's the perspective, right? We're not saying Abraham was crazy. Abraham was not just doing it out of like the sake of doing it, but he did it out of faith, right? Okay. Then now we come to the next portion. Okay. So in verse eight, it says that uh, Abraham said to God, uh, "Say, God will provide Himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son." So they went on. Okay. They went off, both of them together, 
And then in verse 9, it talks about when they came to the place which God had told him, okay, which is this particular spot. Okay? So imagine, right, when they came to this place where God told him. So it's obvious that God has been speaking to Abraham. Okay? There's a communication going on. There's a moment that there is the presence of God with Abraham. Right? Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife and slaughter, to slaughter his son. Okay, Let's just pause back to verse 9. Okay, Remember when I said that Isaac is like a teenager, like a 15-year-old to like 25-year-old, 30-year-old. And then we have Abraham, who's like an elderly, uh, 110 years old, uh, to about 125, 30 years old as well. Okay, I just want to think about it, right? We don't have to put it such a big gap. Okay, Just imagine a... Any parent now trying to fight with their 15-year-old, okay? I'm quite sure it's a struggle, okay? I'm quite sure it's hard to actually bound a 15-year-old, okay? Being a 15-year-old, 20-year-old, 35-year-old, it's easily for him, Isaac, to just run away the moment he say like, what? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna sacrifice me? I'm gonna run, right? Okay, I'm gonna run. Run like crazy, okay? But imagine this, right? He's a grown man, man-ish, okay? How is it even possible that he doesn't run away? Right. I just want to put it in this way, where we see, as much as we ap- admire the faith of Abraham, right? I want you to also look at the faith of Isaac, right? When he is in that season of thinking like he's probably going to be dead soon, right? But he actually trusted his father to allow that to happen, right? So I want to give you that perspective. Probably in the moment as they were going through this, this moment of bounding Isaac and explaining to him, probably Abraham had spoken to him and talked to him about what is God's plan and everything that God has asked him to uh, sacrifice his son or anything. We're not sure what's the conversation like, okay? But in reality, we know, right? Anyone who are trying to bound someone, try to kidnap someone, they'll try to rebel and run away. But Isaac didn't. And Isaac stood there. Isaac obeyed this, right? So when this all happened, it, it was probably some, some sort of resistance, but managed to still get Isaac on the altar to be bounded and to be sacrificed. Right? Then in verse 10, it talks about, then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. Right? So imagine that he actually reached out to the knife and wanted to go and dive deep and slaughter his son. Immediately during this time, the angel of the Lord appeared, and it says in verse 11, But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Okay. You know, many times in the Bible, right, when we know when it, the, the word repeats twice, it means it's really, really, really important. So there's a really huge urgency there, whereby the angel of the Lord really needed to stop Abraham by calling him twice. Right? There's an urgency that God doesn't actually want this to go through. Right? So he calls it, Hey, Abraham, Abraham. Okay? And then in verse 12, he said, Do not lay your hands on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Okay? As we see this, we, we, we know and very clearly know. Okay? Abraham didn't know this was a test. But we know it's a test. Right? But in Abraham's shoes, all he wanted to do was to honor God and believe and trust that his covenant with God, his promises by God is there and he will trust them fully, right? Okay, so that's how we want to just emphasize that, you know, God is there for you, okay? Okay, then now we go forward, okay, that we know that he fears God and then we go to verse 13 and 14, okay, let's keep reading first, okay? And then the moment they stopped Abraham from uh, slaughtering his son, the angel appeared and everything. Then a ram was av- available behind him. Okay, so let's go to verse 13. Okay, and Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horn. Okay, so just for context, okay, what is a thicket? Okay, a thicket is like probably some um, branches kind of thing, and it's actually true. Okay, this is not like a one off thing that just happens out of nowhere, right? It's actually common that. Um, um, Rams or deers with horns uh, do catch, uh, do get caught in this because of the way that they're going about. Okay, and then over there they saw this. So when the moment the angel stopped Abraham, and then Abraham found out that there is a ram there, then he knew 
that I, and then Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as burnt offering instead of his son. In that same way, God will provide you with an alternative so long you are willing, right? When God asks you to obey, okay? So I go to verse 14 first, okay? So Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide, which is what we're actually talking about today, okay? Jehovah Jireh, okay? It's, and it said, uh, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided, says the verse 14. And then verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself, I sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this, have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offsprings for the stars and heaven and sands uh, of the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies and your offspring shall, uh, your offspring shall all of nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Okay. Just going through all of that, right? The whole incident of God, of just Abraham sacrificing his son and ultimately, God just showing up and really telling you, right? Okay. I was at this portion whereby I told you it was a norm whereby people, uh, some beliefs back then, they believe in child sacrificial, right? In this way, God was also telling us, right? God does not need this children's sacrifice at all, okay? And that also explains, that also pre- represents that we shouldn't allow it to continue to happen as well. So that's one portion whereby God wants to put a stop to children's sacrifices, right? The other portion of it is also looking at how God has actually moved through the whole entire season. So now when I kept mentioning uh, Jesus, the story of Jesus being crucified versus the story of Isaac is very similar, okay? We come to this point whereby the significant difference is God is always in it for us, for who he has created in this world, okay? God spared Isaac from being sacrificed, but in return and gave a ram. But yet, when we look at the life of Jesus, he had to go through with his sacrifice. Imagine that we kept emphasizing on the potential pain that Abraham would be feeling, the potential loss, the potential confusion at that moment of receiving that, right? He felt the pain of losing a child. He felt the pain of really going through it. But ultimately, Abraham still got his son back, right? And just as that, God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us as our sacrifice in exchange for us. You see, many times we only look at God being a provider in very physical forms, in very contextual life, uh, life ways, right? Okay. So I hear many people using the word Jehovah Jireh to express that, oh, Jehovah Jireh, God provided me with this new deal, or Jehovah Jireh, God will bless me with my finance, or bless me with my status, or bless me with different areas, right? But the Jehovah Jireh that we want to bring out today, right, is beyond all those physical needs. Imagine that you have access to not just your physical needs, but your spiritual needs, your emotional needs, the healing that you need. God has provided all of that to you in His promises, right? As we go towards this clear direction, right, the one thing that God knew that we all needed was that need of salvation, from that, that things, the sin that we have, we have accumulated throughout life, right? And it just takes that one faith, that one trust, and that one promise, right? That God is going to be there for us, right? And He sent His only Son to die on a cross for us so that we can be redeemed through that method, right? You, we all know that the crucifixion of Jesus is real and is true. And that's what holds our foundation of knowing that God is a provider, right? There's so many ways that He has provided for us, but have you ever thought through it, that process, that God provides you even with a need that you do not see right now? Because a lot of us, I mean, for myself, I can be very honest. 
sometimes all I think about is probably the financial perspective of life and the challenges of life. And I look at it through just one lens, looking at the world right now and thinking what kind of goals I can achieve in certain areas of my life. My financial goals, my friendship goals, my, my this goal, that goal. We're all driven by goals, right? But there's one goal that we probably will never set, right? Will we ever set our God and purpose goal to, to, to have no more sin? Oh, that's possibly one goal that no human being would actually set, right? But God has set that for us, right? God has already set that and promised that to us so long that our action is to trust that Jesus died on the cross for us to exchange that life for us. That is exactly what we mean by God is our provider, okay? He provides the needs that we do not see, right? And He always goes ahead of us and, and takes care of us, right? With that, I think I just want to come back to this whole entire wrap-up of my message, right? Jehovah Jireh, through the lens of Abraham's life at this juncture, right? He had gone through multiple challenges in the past, right? He's failed on certain tests. He's probably tried his own ways. But without fail, God had always kept his promise on allowing Abraham to lift up his name of Abraham, which is the father of men. And that we can see through the entire history of the Bible, we see that coming through. But it all begins with a posture of obedience. The thought process is that, how fast do you usually approach God's request to you or God's commands to you? How often have you felt that tug in your heart whereby God has asked you to do something really difficult, probably in similar terms, sacrificing a child, and you went ahead without that struggle, without that, and just went straight for it. Okay. Not many people can do it, and it's really hard. Okay. But I'm quite sure that if you take that time and that journey to journey with God yourself, you will experience that for yourself. Right? It's not a one-day thing whereby you can just do it like that, but it's always a journey. And that's the powerful part about this awesome God series. We experience God in many ways and many forms and the ways that He can be close to us and how we can relate to Him. It's just that today, we're going to talk about your obedience, right? How will you respond to God when God calls you, right? And also we look at how Abraham's faith, right? His faith of knowing God knows best in every circumstances, right? God's lens of our world is very different from how we look at our world. He is a God. Our God is a knowing God. And He sees towards our future and He sees that, right? You ever heard about the message last week about how, how God sees into us, right? And more than that, ultimately, through those experiences of how God sees us in our lives, we're experiencing, we're experiencing Him wholly in the wholeness of Him, right? And that is part of God's purpose, right? As we experience Him, we will also go through and learn that the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus is really the ultimate provision that God has given us. He's given us an achievement of our goals that we have never even set because He knows it's better, right? He knows it's best for us, right? So in, in just to this, I want to encourage you, okay? If you're new to this and you couldn't grasp the concept of like, how is this God asking some asking his, his faithful servant to sacrifice his child I want to share with you this is not that story right that's just the drawing point for you to be attracted to the message but the true message is that God always just set it as a test God never wanted Isaac to be sacrificed and God journeyed through that journey with Isaac and with Abraham you have to understand that everything that God plans for you in your life has its purpose and God will journey with you, right? I want to encourage you, if you haven't taken that step to actually understand who this great God is, we want to encourage you to reach out to us and have a chat. Right now on screen, you can see that QR code, right? Okay. The QR code will link you to a prayer, uh, a prayer link whereby you can request for prayers. But at the same time, if let's say you've actually heard the message and you find that you want to have a conversation about this story, right? This this pretty difficult to digest story. We want to we want to listen out from you as well. So at the prayer request box, just key in. Probably you say like, okay, I want to talk to someone about whatever, and you just preach about this sacrificial uh, Abraham about his son and everything, right? Let's just talk, right? And we want to get to know you as well. And in that journey, 
we want to possibly show you that you have also had the opportunity to attain that goal that God set for you, which you didn't set yourself, but He has a way for you to achieve it. Okay. So lastly, on your do something, okay, your do something, okay. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his precious son. Abraham's faith was showed that he loved God more than his blessings. Okay. How would you react if God asked you to give up something for him today? Okay. Similarly, like I shared, I would have struggled with God and sort of, sort of tussle and ask him, are you serious? Are you sure? But ultimately, I know I will give in to God because my story at the end of the day, I did sell off my business and lo and behold, I'm doing far better than what I used to be before. God has provided me to different avenues to meet different people. And most importantly, he grew me through my faith, right? That I now trust him no matter what my circumstances are. Because what my worldly lens of circumstances doesn't mean what God has for me in my future. So let's switch those lenses, right? Let's try to understand where God wants us to be for the long run. Okay. I wrap up. That's my, that's my message for today. I hope you have reflected and are encouraged by the word that Abraham, the way that Abraham lived his faith, and how God has provided us Jesus as a great exchange in terms of the sacrifice. Right. So let's pray and wrap this message up. Father Lord. We want to pray and ask that you come into our hearts right now, Lord. In whichever way that we find that you are our provider, whether it is just on the physical ways, on our, our finances, our homes, our, our opportunities. But Lord, please, Lord, teach us to see your will in our life, that you are here to give us more than just all that. You're allowing us to experience the eternal life in your presence so lord i pray that in this message lord we learn that you are a god that provides not just on our needs but even things that we don't see i pray that we learn to lean on you and we trust you in every move that we do i pray that abraham will be an example for us to live our lives in jesus name i pray amen that's it so everyone i hope this message has allowed you and encouraged you to live life to the fullest in trusting god as the best for you Right. So that's it. Until then, next week, we'll see you back in. And also, Happy Chinese New Year. It's just going to happen in a couple days. I hope you guys are excited and prepared with your QR codes. I am prepared as, as awesome, right? I've already got them all prepared in my uh, printed form or like uh, uh, in the visual forms and everything, right? Ready to go on Zoom with all my QR codes, okay? So just to let you know, I still can accept Ang Pao. So uncle, auntie, those of you who can, I will openly give you my QR code, okay? But jokes as I wish you a happy Chinese New Year and really hope that Jehovah Jireh means a different way to you that it's not just about the financial needs it's about the things that you don't even see for yourself so let's just keep praying and allow God to move in us and show us alright so good night everyone thank you Andrea for the very encouraging word on Jehovah Jireh and today as we reflect what we need to give sacrifice and release to God in the same spirit, I want to move us into our next part of our worship, which is our tithe and offering. And today, I want to read us a verse, a few verses from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 2 to 4. And it says, You shall take some of the first of all fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose, to make his name dwell there. And shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And today as we give, uh, whether um, we are in lack or we are in abundance, uh, the verse says here, right, back in the Bible times, whether it was their flock or their garden, it was the first 10% of whatever they gain that they give to the Lord. And it's not just any 10%, it's the first, the best 10%. And there's something about giving the best to God, right? Because it reminds you that He actually is the reason that you have anything at all in the first place. So the tithing and returning back to God is not an obligation, but really it's a gift. It provides us with a tangible way of saying that, Lord, I trust you and you can do with my 10% more than what I can do with my 100%. So, 
really tithing helps us remember who our provider really is. So today, as we go into our tithes and offering, I just want to pray and commit uh, our giving unto the Lord. So let's pray. Father Lord, today as we give, you see this generous givers. So I just pray that you'll, you'll see the hearts of these givers and you'll bless them manifold. Lord, I also pray that whatever we give today, you'll use it, um, you'll help us to use it for the expansion of your kingdom and for the maximum glory of your name. Lord, we entrust all this uh, uh, giving into your hands. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So today, uh, as you give, you can see there are three ways of giving on the screen. Uh, first, you have the e-wallet, which you can scan with your uh, QR code scanner. You just take out your phone and scan the QR code and it will bring you to a screen uh, to pay via e-wallet or online bank transfer. But if you, have, if you prefer more traditional ways of giving, you can do uh, you can use the bank account on screen to do an online transfer or you can write a check as well. So those are the three ways of giving. You are not obligated to give, but if you give, we believe that you will be blessed. So moving on, remember tonight at 9.30pm, which is right about soon, right? Uh, we are going to have our Mandarin Sermon Series. These sermons are translated from previous week's sermons into Mandarin. So if you prefer listening to our sermons in Mandarin, be sure to tune in at 9.30 p.m. or share, share it on your timeline as well so that you, that you can bless your Mandarin-speaking friends. And last but not least, we are going to have uh, our life group, right? Uh, life group is where we do life together, we share with each other and we walk this journey with Christ together as a community. So if you are not part of a life group yet, do sign up for a life group. The link is on screen. Just go in there, put down your details, and we will get connected to you. Um, and we want to connect you to our community as soon as possible. So that's all for today. I hope you have been blessed uh, by our worship and by our word. I hope you have been blessed by uh, this service. So take care, everyone. Stay safe. Happy Chinese New Year. God bless.
Supplied with all the joy you bring.